So I'm Amay Finlay, I'm here with Crokey at the Lowinger and NHMRC Research Translation Conference and I'm sitting here with Hayes White who presented this morning. Yeah, so I'm from Te Whanau Waipareira uh, Y Research Unit in New Zealand and this morning we talked about uh, a project we're working on, Pathways to Mental Health, and it's not necessarily about uh, the project that's important, it's about how we are uh, doing translational research on the ground. Yeah, and I think that's really important because I think there often are people who talk about the methods and then the outcomes, but they don't talk about the process. Can you elaborate on the process of translational research on the ground? Yeah, and from a community perspective, the on the ground part is really important to us. Um, I think Mason's talked about it, there's the dual accountability, uh, accountability. so when, we, when we're trained as researchers, we're trained to give back to the science community, but not as well trained to communicate with our own communities. So that's a big deficit that we've found. So what we're trying to do is figure out ways that, to talk to our communities, to translate findings back to them. And that might be something like a social media, it might be something like a video editing, uh, video editing might be something like a poster. So um, being in the community research realm, uh, I've definitely learned a lot more skills. I've learned how to edit a video, I've learned how to do live stream, use Periscope, um, tweet a lot more. So just figuring out ways to communicate communicate with your community in ways that they're listening. Yeah. And what, how do you what's the feedback you've gotten from communities about this? Well, back to the dual accountabilities um, part as well. In the academic world, you submit something to be published and to be peer reviewed. In the community world, our peer reviewers are our community. Oh, and they tell you a bit. And they'll tell us. <laughs> uh, just uh, three weeks ago, we had an event where we um, gave some of the research findings back to our kaumatua, our elders. And that was an awesome event. They were all receptive to it, but I was probably more nervous in that setting than I've ever been in um, submitting anything to the scientific community. Yep, I can appreciate that. As a, a Yorta Yorta woman, if I had to go and talk to my community about findings that were directly related to them, I would be petrified. It's, it's their names. Yeah. So you're, you're using their stories. They can see their words inside of your research. So when you're talking to the scientific community, you're, there's a, they don't know who these people are. But on the other side, your community, they can see their own stories. So if you're presenting that in a a negative way or in a way that they don't approve, they'll definitely tell you. Yeah. And it's really, I mean, I don't know how you feel as a, a, an Indigenous researcher working in our communities, but I feel like it's a real privilege, but also a significant responsibility to make sure that we're representing our communities in a way that they're going to be happy with, because for a long time, yeah. researchers haven't done that. Yeah. And it's, it's huge. For me, it's my own family that I'm talking about. It's my friends down the street, it's my auntie. So I'm more obliged to them or I'm responsible to them than anybody else in this, in this world. There's, these are stories that I'm talking about. I'm talking about my mother and these stories I'm talking about my brother. So I care more about these, these people than I do feeding to academic discourse, which is important. It's, I'm not saying one's more important than the other. There's, uh, we've talked about it this morning, it's about that interface, it's about that balance between science and indigenous science, because they are both sciences, um, but just acknowledging there's a place, a valid place for both of those sciences. Yeah. yeah, and I actually think it's also really important that that conversation that you just had was actually saying it's indigenous science. Yeah. So often our knowledges are not considered to be valuable. Yeah. So statistician will get paid, yeah. but a, com a person that's coming from a community perspective, bringing all their knowledge with them doesn't get paid because it's just community. Yeah. So, we've been doing science for hundreds, thousands of years. You guys have been doing it for even longer. Um, only really in the last hundred years has um, indigenous knowledge starting to um, creep into the science world to started to get that validation and that acknowledgement. Um, it's a lot of the work that Sir Mason has done in New Zealand. There's a lot of indigenous researchers around the world. Um, I think we've still got a long way to go. Um, before we're at a place where there's a balance between the two approaches. But it's, this is why we're here today. We're having that discussion, we're adding to that evidence space. Um, and it's really inspiring to see that we're all having the same conversation. Yeah. yeah. And are uh, you going to do a PhD next year right oh, here? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's just, that's, that's a lot of, um, Dr. Carey talked about this this, uh, this morning and that the work that she does for her community is as fulfilling as 
getting a PhD or a master's. Not saying that I don't want to do that, but when I talk about that thing, like I don't want to lose something, uh, lose some sort of connection to my community. So if it was to to do my PhD, it's definitely to do with community research. Yeah. I'm here. I'm in the space. So. I don't usually break into these, it's Mari from Koki here on the other side of the camera, but we're getting a lot of parts from, and I think from your organisation, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who have all said, yes, PhD. Uh, <laughs> have I put you in it now? Yeah, probably. Well, I, I can tell you, I wasn't sure I wanted to do a PhD. I'm yeah. doing one. Yeah. The reason I'm doing one is because in a Western context, yeah. having that doctor in front of my name gives me more credibility, so therefore I can go and advocate on behalf of our communities in a way that they get. Yeah. And I bring that, what they see as expertise and knowledge, and combine that with community. So um, yeah. it has value. Yeah, but in that, I still need to improve my cultural side. Yeah. I still need to, need to learn more about my cultural values. I need to learn more about uh, my language. So they, I need to take both journeys. Yeah. So that's why I'm, That's why I think about it. I don't want to lose something over here. I don't want to spend five years over here and then have missed five years um, potentially being fluent in my language because yep. that's probably an equal status and importance to me. Yes, I'm very envious. We don't have a lot of our language and if I had the choice between language and a PhD, I know what I'd be doing. Yeah. So, and I think that's something people forget when we, they see us as performing within a Western context. Yeah. They forget that actually what's most important to us is not what's Western, but is actually our community and culture. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, that was a good place to end it, I guess.